Review time. This is the Amo Meter MS8217. Now it might look a bit familiar if you own a meter called the Fluke 17B. Uh, in fact, it almost looks identical. Uh, I'm not sure if this company is running some uh, extra copies off from the same uh, die set as the Fluke or if they made an absolute copy of it, but uh, I guess that's a sincerest form of flattery to uh, Im imitate somebody. Uh, literally every dial, every button uh, is actually duplicated on the face plate of the uh, meter. Now they are me they are different at least on the display. You can see that the uh, the way the digits are shown where the, all the signatures are uh, that's different but uh, physically uh, they look similar. So uh, I'm going to tear this thing apart and see what's inside of it. So just looking at the back here uh, the text is uh, unique uh, compared to the Fluke and you can see they've had a fair bit of trouble trying to uh, translate into English uh, I'm not sure if they're mixing up German or where they're getting some of these words for. Uh, for example, there's two fuses claimed in the meter, and that's great to see. Hopefully they're there. Uh, but uh, there's a word here, uh, rebit, and I'm not even sure what that means. Uh, insurance limit, uh, which of course would be a very strange terminology for describing a fuse. Uh, and here as well, they have a K on the end of uh, the electric. And then please pull out the test pen, which of course I would presume is the test probe, before opening the battery cover. So... Um, no surprise that uh, this is coming from a vendor who uh, hasn't quite yet grasped the how to uh, translate uh, text correctly. Okay, just open up both meters. The fluke meter is on the left here and the AMO meter is on the right. And you can quickly see that they're not the same circuit board, but um, there's some interesting sort of comparisons you can do. Uh, the fuses in the fluke meter uh, have markings on them. Uh, in fact, this one's a German-made fuse. Uh, there's sort of a traceability to the fuse, so you have some confidence uh, it meets its requirements. This looks like a ceramic fuse, but there's absolutely no regulatory markings on it whatsoever, so uh, there's no traceability. And I guess that's a big concern with the really inexpensive meters as to whether or not they're very uh, safe to use on high-energy circuits. Um, there's obviously the main measurement I see in both uh, up here. The buzzers, you can see they're slightly different positions. Uh, here's the, uh, the current shunt for uh, um, the AMO meters on this side here, and here's the current shunt for the, uh, the fluke meter in the high uh, 10 amp range. So they are different. If I just now sort of zoom into the actual um, AMO meter, and uh, we can look at some of the uh, issues that really pop up. Uh, so just zooming in to the uh, look at the solder joint quality, it looks okay for the most part until you come down to uh, this component here. Uh, clearly they had to rework it. Uh, you can see uh, little residues of flux um, and unfortunately they didn't do a really great job of cleaning it off so sort of uh, comes with a theme here that we're looking at a meter produced by a, a relatively unsophisticated vendor. Uh, the overall assembly uh, however seems um, actually better than some meters I've turned down. Uh, it looks like it's all been uh, picked and placed properly uh, onto uh, a circuit board that appears to have a reasonable quality. Uh, I can even, of course, see a, a UL marking here for the manufacturer. And they just pop up the listing for them. So, uh, presuming if this text is actually legitimate and re represents the actual vendor, uh, which, of course, it should by law, but you never know with life, um, that's a, a plausible vendor for the raw board material. Um, the only real concern, of course, with these really low-end meters is as to uh, if they've done the high voltage correctly. Uh, if you look at the front of the meter, there's some nice text which says that this meter is a CAT1 1000 volt and CAT2 600 volts. Uh, and the only way to be sure of that is to uh, see if the uh, what's called creepage distances are correct. Um, and just looking this at this uh, offhand, some of these traces certainly seem uh, a little closer than what I would uh, expect for uh, creepage distances, but. Um, and of course that's the other big problem with like the CE mark and uh, the CAT ratings is there's no government body actually uh, uh, creating the mark so uh, you have to trust the manufacturers done the testing correctly uh, and certainly there seems to be some healthy skepticism in the industry as to uh, how seriously some vendors uh, treat that so um, one reason of course um, I generally use a fluke meter for high energy circuits and uh, these inexpensive uh, Chinese meters have a place for sort of automotive and low voltage but uh, this certainly becomes a concern. Um, let's uh, look at the uh, current uh, side of the meter next. So, um, on the super disturbing uh, metric, this is the ground terminal, 
and this is the 10 amp input and you would have sort of expect that there would be fuse in line because what, what meters do is they create a, uh, a, diff a voltage from a uh, very low value resistance but when I trace out this assembly here, this is the 10 amp terminal, this is of course the shunt resistor and then it shorts down to the ground here so uh, there's virtually a dead short here and I honestly don't know what this fuse does actually uh, if anything at all <laughs> um, I really hope I'm misreading that because if I'm not, uh, this essentially is not a fused meter, uh, which is uh, veering, veering into uh, scary territory. Okay, so I just was tracing out the circuit and it looked like uh, from the 10 amp input to the ground terminal, uh, it was essentially a short and it doesn't go through the fuse, which confuses me. Now I see I've taken the fuse out and if I put my multimeter uh, terminals on, uh, you can still see it's reading essentially a zero resistance. Uh, which is quite extraordinary. Um, I'm not quite sure where that fuse goes or how it's being implemented, but uh, it's not kind of where I would have expected it. Now, on the low current range, uh, this is the low current terminal here. Of course, it goes to one side of the fuse, which is fine. And uh, as you can see, this fuse also, I've popped it up. And uh, in this case, however, there is, uh, there is no short of short going on. So at least the low current range appears to be uh, more plausible. But uh, I don't believe that's correct for the high current range. I don't think that should be a short. Let me just, um, let me just try the fluke meter. Uh, so the terminals are the amps here and then the common here. And uh, of course when I put a meter on to start with, it'll be a low resistance because uh, that's what it's meant to be. But if I was to pull the fuse out, uh, I should see this go to, yeah, high impedance. So um, wow, that's quite extraordinary. Uh, I'm not sure what to say. So just another note on workmanship. Um, I was just assembling the meter back together. You can see the screw head and it uh, seems to be coming over onto the other trace and that's not an optical illusion. Uh, essentially the, the head is so large actually if I was to really torque down the screw and uh, cut into the uh, resist it would actually short the trace out to the plane. So. Uh, clearly something that you would not want in a, a meter. Um, that's what often uh, befouls uh, smaller vendors. They can't get the electromechanicals right. So, And that's always a challenge. So for completeness, let's um, see if the meters are relatively accurate. This is a little of voltage and current and resistance standard. And uh, you can see the meter is declaring 4.98 volts. And that's about right. I, I just hooked the fluke meter in parallel. So... Uh, the meters actually agree, so the voltage range, at least uh, in this one limited test, seems fine. If I switch it over to uh, the resistance mode, I'll have to take off the, uh, the fluke meter here, and uh, it should be a series of well, it shouldn't it is a precision series of resistors that should add up to uh, 111 kilo ohms, uh, and of course you can see. Uh, it also is within uh, its accuracy spec. This isn't a huge surprise, actually. You get um, even the cheapest the meter seems to be able to successfully uh, meet the requirements in terms of uh, accuracy out of box. I think that's really an attribute of uh, the high quality chipsets that are now uh, purchasable. This is a, a 1 milliamp uh, source I'll just turn on here. Uh, again, the milliamp range looked like it was at least properly fused. Um, and, uh, of course, I should probably turn it into the milliamp uh, setting. Well, let's go to microamps to start with and uh, get a sense if it's uh, 1,000. That's uh, wonderful. That's correct. Um, go to the milliamp range and declare 1 milliamp. That's great. Uh, go in the amps range and, of course, uh, have to switch the lead over to the, uh, the higher current. Not sure if it'll be able to register it because uh, it's such a small uh, current, um, and indeed it's declaring um, something very funny actually, um, even declaring millivolts, even though I'm in the ampere range, um, which doesn't make much sense at all. So the uh, the ampere range of this meter uh, certainly acts in a, in a very unusual way. Uh, okay, so I consulted the manual, and the, the claims the ampere range should be amps, but uh, if you look very closely, my meter says uh, millivolt, but then if I press the dial down a little bit, it says amperes. Um, and that's just as scary as it gets. So, 
Uh -huh, wow. Um, so it's a, it's a little erratic here. If I press the dial, it seems to um, declare the wrong value. Um, I'm not sure if I put the meter together incorrectly, but I uh, honestly don't think so because I didn't take the circuit board out. Uh, this is certainly um, this is certainly a meter I would have a hard time trusting in my uh, my workshop. 